Hi, I'm Karen Alkali Goot, and I'm going to read some poems for you from a book that's just coming out. You can find it on Kindle, but it's uh, not published yet, really, because of the corona. It's called A Word in Edgewise, Ladies from the Bible Tell Their Tales. And it starts with this poem. I'll read the first and the last, and a couple in between. It ain't necessarily. Well, may you wonder why he fashioned them at all. Those vessels, those wombs, when he could have just taught Adam how to remove his own rib, make his own sons. After all, most are not significant enough to mention by name for generations to come. But somehow, they're always the cusp of the narrative, the troublemakers, the heroines, the cleftists. Here's a heroine from the book of Miriam. It's called At the Reeds. The trick is to catch her at the moment she says, what a cute baby, to make the rest of the way easier. You like it, it's yours, and no extra effort on your part. For the slightest of fees, we, Provide the child care. Keep the kid out of your hair. Those times when he can be a pain. I cannot explain the way I knew it then. The spell of transforming my doomed brother into Prince of Egypt. Even before I was given a name. And here's Jezebel. The cleft, the material girl. Call me Jezebel. <coughs> Call me Jezebel. Call me Jezebel, I want Whatever is forbidden, call me Jezebel. I want what is a luxurious. I don't even see the people standing between me and my desires. A simple vineyard, perfect makeup, a home to break up, a prophet to shake up. A white whale. Call me Jezebel. I am a goddess that is greater. Call me Jezebel. I'm resistible. I just need a small degree of fame or infamy. Call me hungry. Like my God, ravenous for sacrifice. From the Book of Ruth. Boaz's mother, not really in there in the book of Ruth, but have you ever noticed I am the only woman in the story with no recognition at all? That Moabite floozy on the threshing room floor made her ex-mother-in-law famous and provided for the rest of her life. And me, the great-grandmother of David, gets no visits on Friday night.
And this is the last poem. Shul. So I'm sitting in my favorite place here, in the women's balcony of the Kippur de Shul, just above where they read the Torah. And I can almost make out the letters. Of course, I've for forbidden to know the language it's written in, but fortunately my companions can tell me the stories firsthand. Except for Eve and Lilith, who sit on opposite sides of the benches and glare at each other, everybody has something to say. You should have been there, says Rebecca. When I first saw those jewels, you'd think I'd have the sense to figure out why they sent me a servant to court instead of the bridegroom himself. Talk about blind matches, Tamar intervenes. I got two loser husbands and was lucky to get one more chance to get some seed before my biological clock ran out. From below, the Torah readers stop the ceremony, bang on the table, and raise their faces at us to shout, Shah! And we lower our voices for a minute. Then the old ladies begin their harsh whispering. Me, I was fine before the flood. But can you imagine what it was like hanging around an old man who knew he was the only righteous one in the world? At least he didn't try to kill his son, Sarah says from the corner. I had to deal with a traumatized kid for the rest of my life. Kvetch, 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 I suddenly intervened. We could go on forever, but we just repeat ourselves over and over every, every year. Thanks. I hope you like these poems.